Hello, this is Joe Neville and welcome to this new video series, Python and Aruba OS CX Part 1. In this video we're going to be looking at getting started with Swagger. In this video we're going to be configuring an Aruba OS CX device for Swagger access, then we're going to log in, get data and configure via the API using the Swagger UI. So this graphical user interface that you can use to interact with the new Aruba OS CX devices. Before we start, a quick recap. So Aruba OS CX, if you don't know already, is the new operating system which runs on Aruba's new campus core and aggregation switches. So that's the Aruba 8400 and the Aruba 8320. And one of the key standouts amongst many new features on this operating system is the 100% REST API coverage of features in the OS. So this gives you an API that is a genuine alternative to using the CLI for configuration and monitoring of this device. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this series. Jumping right in then, here I have SSH into an Aruba 8400 running the latest version of CX. So you need to configure three things before you can access the Swagger UI for configuration and management. First of all, you need to create a local user. So here you can see an example of that. User admin is in the administrator group and there's the cipher of the password. The next two steps are closely related. They're to turn the HTTPS server on that you're going to use for the Swagger UI. So it's these two commands here. You've got HTTPS server rest access mode read write. You must have read write so that we can use Swagger for configuration of data and altering the configuration on the switch. Plus you need to turn the HTTP server on in the VRF. Now, this depends on how you're going to access the switch. I'm going to be accessing the switch through the management interface, which is automatically put in the management, the MGMT VRF. So I've turned on the HTTPS server in the management VRF. Once that's done, then we can go ahead and log into our switch. And here we are on the web UI, so we want to jump onto the Swagger interface. So we go over to this cog over here, hit that, and it brings up APIs. And here we are logged into the Swagger UI of our switch. So as you can see, a Ruber OS CX REST API. And each one of these headers that you can click on, that's a link for a call that you can make to the switch. So first of all, what we need to do is just like a normal switch, we need to log in. Let's jump over here, log in. Okay, expand that. And what you can see there is that this is a post. So those that... The post is an HTTP call um, and we're going to send it to the URL with the suffix of login. So let's expand that. Great thing about Swagger is that it is documentation in itself to help you interact with the API, but it is live. It's interactive. So you, it's not just information. You can actually fill out the uh, information for the, for example, username and the password here. It will build and send the URL um, of that REST API call. So let's go ahead and do that. To log into the switch. And there you can see the response code of 200. So we are logged into the switch. So let's go ahead and do some simple operation looking at some VLANs. Okay, so we scroll down to VLAN, expand that. This is a big one. You can see there's multiple operations here. Get, so that's to get information. Post, that's to post a new VLAN. Delete, obviously, is to delete a VLAN. Get again for a specific VLAN, so you put the ID in there. Put is to alter 
information. So post is when you want to configure new information. So you would use a post if you were going to configure a new VLAN on a device. But if you had a VLAN on a device and you wanted to change something like the name of it, for example, you would do a put. OK, so we're going to do a get first of all. So we hit get. And this is big. There's lots of information for the VLAN that you can see. I won't go into all of this detail. We'll just scroll down to the bottom. OK, so we're just doing a get. There's no information for us to send. We just do a submit. That will go off to our switch and get the VLANs for us. OK, so here's the VLANs listed. You can see the VLANs on the box. These are internal VLANs that are always on there. So this this is the important stuff for us about the configured VLAN. But also what's really useful about the Swag UI is it gives you the curl. It gives you the request URL that we sent. So this is the information that you need when you're building the REST calls within Python. So more about that in subsequent videos. That's essentially the, what I see as the workflow of using Swagger. When you're trying to build calls in Python, you look at Swagger first, you do the, you read the notes, uh, you, you interact with the switch, you get the information that you want in the response body, then you check the curl for the information that needs to be sent to get that information. So over time you can build up an idea of how to interact with the API. I've jumped back onto the switch so I can show you the VLAN table via the CLI as well to show you that they tie up. Okay, show VLAN. There you can see we've got VLAN 110, 15, 200, and 4094. Okay, so those are listed there. What we're going to do is we're going to configure a VLAN, then we're going to look on the CLI and see that it's there. Easy enough to do via Swagger. Um, we are configuring a new VLAN. Let's check. Let's configure VLAN 20 then. OK, so that will be a post because it's a new VLAN. And here we have the post. So this is the data that we need. And over here is an example value. OK, so that's what's being shown there. But you do need to know a bit about the information that is required. So where do you find that? Well, if you hit model here, you get a lot of information, okay? So you can see which is optional information that you can put in the data when you're doing your send. Now, there's a lot in here. Thankfully, I know already, because I've used this, what I need to include. So as you can see, there's lots of optional. Now, an ID is not optional. Obviously, when you're configuring a VLAN, you need to include a VLAN ID to um, identify it, of course. So that's our VLAN ID that needs to be included. And we've got the, there you can see how Swagger gives you the information that you that is required. So it's going to be an integer, which is between uh, one and what's that? Three, two, seven, six, seven is the maximum value that we can include. And if we scroll down a bit more, we'll see another required value, which is the name. OK, name there. So user configurable VLAN name. So that's what we need to include, an ID and a name. What we do is we scroll back up. Let's go back to example value. This is what I found is the quickest way to do this. Once you know the required variables that we have to include with the data, this is where we're going to put the data. So we need to put the ID and the name in there. If you hit that, it pre-fills it. And what I tend to do is I take out the information that's not required and leave in the information that is so that I've got that formatting. So what was the other one? It was the ID. Now, there we go. There's the ID. Take that out. Scroll up. Take out the rest of it. Let's tidy that up. It has to be in the exact format for the data to be accepted. You can't, um, you, you have to have the double quotation marks, you have to have the number there, you have to have the string, you can't put a comma. That's a, a standard mistake if you're following this process that I'm using. If you leave a comma in there, that will get rejected. The data needs to be in a strict format. So it's double quotation marks for the strings of the key of this key value pair. We know the ID is an integer, 
um, then the name has to be a string as it's telling you there. Okay, so we were going to configure 20. There we are, the string, what should we call it? Let's call it swag VLAN, brilliant. Right, that's what we're going to send. You might say, well, what IP address are you sending? Remember, this is the Swagger IP, um, this is the Swagger UI of the switch. So we're always sending to our switch there. Let's submit that. Off it goes. What have we got back? First of all, first thing to always look for if you're doing a post is you want the HTTP response code of 201. That's what we've got. That's a successful um, post. If you're going to build calls in Python, this is what you need. You need the data in your call in this format. So that's what Swagger's giving you. You can see the URL that you need. So this VLANs, you have to include the data of the ID and the name. So that's what you would put into your Python script if you wanted to do a post and configure VLANs via Python interacting with the API. Let's jump over to the CLI. Do our show VLAN, there we go, number 20, swag VLAN, excellent. You can scroll up as well if you want to stick with the API. So this is the get again, you can see the get. Just hit submit and you'll see, there we go, VLAN 20 has been included there. But what if you want to get rid of the swag VLAN? Let's close this down. Okay, so we are going to do a delete. So delete a VLANs, let's reset it. The ID is the VLAN that you wish to delete. There's no information like name. You've got the parameters there exactly of what you need. We scroll down, do a submit and there we go. Right, the response code 204, so that was a successful delete you can see there again if you were building your python scripts those are the information so it would be a delete http call that you make to the api here's the url that you used let's keep with the api if we scroll up there's our get again remember this is our get let's submit and you see it's disappeared back to the cli to check that that definitely has been deleted And there we go, no VLAN 20 anymore. Okay, coming up in the next video, I'm going to look at how to use Swagger specifically to build the REST calls in Python. So I did mention about copying the URLs from the Swagger and the data that we need to put into the header. I'm going to be showing you how to do that with specific examples. We'll recreate this VLAN gets um, post and deletes in Python. That was getting started with Swagger, a quick look at how to interact with the Swagger UI in this new series of Python and Aruba OS CX. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back soon with that next video. But for now, thanks for watching. My name's Joe Neville and goodbye.